Good afternoon and welcome back to the Ask Dr. Renee show. If you've never watched the show before, I'm your host, Dr. Renee, and this show is here to motivate and inspire you to live the life you deserve. Because let's face it, we do not have a dress rehearsal. This is the one and only life we have, so we might as well live it up. May is Allergy and Asthma Awareness Month. In case you haven't been watching the show or you're not a lifer, you should join my lovely email list. And I'm going to tell you how. I'm going to show you one second. Here we go. Text live life to 66866, 66866 to join my email list. But my book is coming out. So you can pre-order the book. It's called Mommy, I Can't Breathe. And it is the modern guide to navigate allergies and asthma. And so it tells you my life story of my allergies and asthma. Also, this week is Food Allergy Awareness Week. So closing out the week, we're going to have somebody who has created like the most amazing thing I think ever and is going to be changing amazing, changing lives all over the world. But I'm so excited to have Javier Evelyn. Javier, thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Beautiful, beautiful to be here. How are you doing today? I am wonderful. Excellent, wonderful. excellent. So is um, it the week course, tonight? I Oh, yes, definitely. I forgot to do my housekeeping, you guys. Definitely, if you want to, please comment, like, and share this. Please comment, like, and share, and then make certain that you um, hit the notification bell so you know when I have another video going up. And I know I said I was going to do videos every day this week, but you guys, I'm sorry. Um, but Monday, I did do an interview with Fox News in Chicago, Fox 32 Chicago with Sylvia Perez. Please make sure you watch it. It was great. Um, and I gave lots of great information, especially if you're a parent of somebody with food allergies. So please check that out. And if you would like, you can please contribute to Super Chat or Super Stickers. I would so appreciate it. Thank you so much. And that is my housekeeping for today. So Javier, I start the show. I always ask everybody, what was it you wanted to be when you were growing up? Man, yeah, great question. Uh, me, you know, just being a typical young, athletic-ish young black boy from the West suburbs, I thought I'll be in the league. I don't know what league that would be. Was I really that great? Absolutely not. But the idols that I looked up to at that time as a young age, you know, my growing up in the city of Chicago, um, I saw six championships. So I thought it's either basketball or, or sports. But beyond that, though, you know, just real quick, uh, my dad, you know, um, he actually worked uh, for Chicago State University growing up, right? But he would get clean. I'm talking about clean like he was going to work on Wall Street. I didn't know that as a kid. I just thought he was a businessman. So in my brain, I was like, I want to be a businessman when I grow up. So something, some seeds were planted a long time ago. So we, since we're doing food allergies, you know, everything's allergies this month. When did you, your family discover you had allergies? You know, I was roughly around like between four or six years old. Like when I cognitively remember, cognitively remember uh, the, the opportunity, I was, um, I think the mom was making um, some type of fish dish. So I think we were talking pre uh, conversation around fish issues that kind of got me. Uh, my mom was practicing to, be, practicing to be a nurse. She did obviously get a nursing degree in Panama. She got to start all over again in the United States. I'll take a bite of the dish. I'm like, mom, this ain't it. And I was always a picky eater. So she did have the right to say, boy, you better eat that food, right? Um, but, you know, after kind of seeing not full Will Smith hitch, but just like me starting to feel like the itching in the back of the throat, she knew that it was time to kind of go up, right? Escalate the situation. Um, the first line of the fence, um, we can go from right bad ha habits back then. Um, it was, epi uh, well, I think we used Benadryl. Yeah. That, I believe, kind of caused some type of help. But beyond that, moving forward, I was always within 10 feet of an EpiPen because of my mom and all the other aunts that are in the healthcare field in our space. So it was pretty early and we've been having pretty amazing support within the family uh, with my condition so far. Awesome. Yeah, I um that's funny cuz I'm a picky eater too. <laughs> <laughs> it just I happens it's like, part of the gig, right? <laughs> right. I was like it, the audacity to only be able to eat just a little bit and then have the nerve to say, "Well, but I don't eat that. And I just don't eat that." Oh, you're allergic. No, 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 I just don't eat that. <laughs> We just know what we want. That's all it is. That's all it is. We're very specific. I guess, so. I guess so. Everyone's like, you have the nerve. I was like, I can't. <laughs> yeah. I like what I like and I know what I don't like. I mean, we're um, all back. <laughs> right. So that is interesting. So um, mm -hmm. my allergies, actually, my mom was feeding me oatmeal to supplement after she was breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And um, okay. actually, no, supplement the breastfeeding because she was still breastfeeding. And okay, okay. I was throwing up. And I was having, my mother's a respiratory therapist. I was wheezing and she's like, this child mm. is very obviously allergic. Something is wrong. Mm. And that's how I, I literally had my allergy test way back then. So I was like two, three months old. 
Wow. So at least you had one. Um, it's not because I don't think we didn't want to take one, but it was a trial and error way. I'll tell you about some of the other ones I got down the road as well, too. Was, oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is. I think it's just because I was a young, wild little kid. That's really what it boils down to. I'm, I'm calm now, so. <laughs> yeah, I um so my mom we figured it out very early and then it was just that's just the way it was and in exactly. the book you guys will see there is a chart my mother created for the preschool to uh -huh. you know make certain they didn't kill me basically. <laughs> <laughs> and the chart is still here at the house to this day. Um, awesome. Yeah, and awesome. I found it. I think I found the chart like when I was in college. I was like, "What's this?" And she goes, "Read it." She's like, "I go, <laughs> oh." And it was weird because there's foods on there that I couldn't eat, that I eat now. Uh, and I was like, oh, well, I can eat that. And she's like, well, you couldn't then, you know. So, so your mom was ahead of her time. She created that, like the initial allergy action plan-ish uh, for you, customized for you. That's awesome. that's amazing. That's pretty, that's pretty Well, that's yeah, I told you she's a respiratory therapist. I tell everyone I was yep. born to the right person because she yep. always stayed ahead of the game when it came to my asthma and allergies. You know, I had a really great doctor and she, and she stayed on top of things and my mom, found all these new things. And so it was really cool. So uh, where did you go to college? So I went to Illinois State University. Uh, go you Redbirds. Um, I actually focused in mass communication. So really, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. That's not, I'm not going to put that on mass comm. I just didn't know what I wanted to do. But the last like year, year and a half, I was super involved on campus. So Black Student Union, obviously, um, but all the way over to, uh, I'll never forget my good friend, Brian Zissa. Uh, Z is what he goes by, DJ Z. Uh, he worked for the radio department and we were talking about, I might've been talking about hip hop and the Jewish white kid was like, yo, I, I, I love that as well too. So we started having a good conversation and we've been BFFs from afar even uh, these days. And he got me involved in the college radio scene. So Renee, I've interviewed, you know, this is our general, I, I think I might be yeah. older than you. So uh, the Sean Pauls of the day, Mike Jones of the day, back in the day, I did all that. I need to find the archives so I can, show y'all how I was trying to get into the industry. I'm glad I made a pivot, but it was a fun experience. Um, um, but Illinois State, great, met the wife there and everything. Oh, Good nice. Time. Now, isn't that Absolutely. where Michelle Williams went? Mm, yeah, I think for I think a bit, so. yes, yes. Yeah. There was, a, there was a, yeah. at the time, I believe, I did not see her on campus at that time. She was before my time, but yes, she did go there as well too. Okay, so I am older than you then. Uh, <laughs> <stop> <laughs> I'm serious. So Michelle was a guest on my show. Ah, so those okay. Those that haven't seen that episode, you should go watch it. I'm Absolutely. hoping that she'll come back. She has a book coming out um, herself uh, this month. And so um, I'm hoping nice. she'll come back. But she was on the show and she talked about being a student at Illinois State. And because that was kind of when the transition happened for her to join Beth Destiny's Child. Yep. So, yeah. But, um, so it's funny you said that you did the college radio thing because my um, soiree, so I've had, I, like, I wear 20 million hats, but I was an entertainment manager and publicist okay. for a very long time. And so um, my first artist was Lady T. Lady T is a rapper out of Detroit. Okay. And then um, I've done PR for Chico de Barge. Um, oh, Chico de Barge. Hart, the lead singer of Troop. I've done some yeah. stuff for Troop. Um, and so, That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I, I yeah, I've had a had my own little entertainment, you know, thing. Um and so and actually yeah, several of the entertainer absolutely. people entertainment people have been on the show. Teddy Riley's been on the show. Uh Steve, of course, Steven Russell. Um, who else? Like I said, Michelle, um, D Nice, DJ mm -hmm. D Nice, who everyone knows now because of Club wow. Quarantine. He was on yeah. the show. Um Kwame. You know what I'm talking uh, about? Kwame, yeah, the, 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 yeah, he was a rapper, if I'm not yep, mistaken. Yep, and yeah, that, yep. you know, Kwame actually wrote a lot of the songs that we know, like hit Mary J, like hit, you know, R and B stuff. Nice. Yes. So I didn't but, know. Um, I, I feel I'm even more honored to be on this show. Like I, I, I'm sweating a little bit more. I didn't know we had to sit in the same seat. Okay, Renee, I'm, I'm ready now. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you are silly, silly, silly. But um, so when you um, so when you went to college, how was that? Like in the dorm? Did you live in the dorm? I did the first uh, two years, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it was it was a struggle, and I say it only because there were two things going on. One, um, I was trying to play football. I was a preferred walk on, so I had a slot. Um, but due to the diet, or really the dietary or the allergies, that is casein is another thing I'm allergic to. So that's a milk protein, so no cheese. And I found that I found out about that around high school because my first job was Little Caesars uh, when I was a sophomore, right? So we I'm eating cheese pizza. Little Caesars every single Saturday. 
I mean, why not? It makes sense. That's what white life should be. But, you know, God had a different plan and said, no more of that for you. And I couldn't do it anymore. Right. So I couldn't gain weight. Right. So it was like the whole like taking away protein shakes when working out. And I had to kind of supplement and find different ways. And I did, wasn't too hip to the plant based proteins that are out there. But the biggest thing that grinded my gears, and still for some reason it bothers me, you know, I, and I, it's jokingly, obviously, jokingly, right? So whenever we have gatherings at the dorms, right, let's say it's about eight to 10 of us squeeze into a room, right, playing spades or Monopoly, yeah. whatever the, whatever's going on, right? Uh, we order pizza and then I'm like, okay, cool. Do they have wings? Please have wings. Please have right. wings. Yes. God, they have wings. Cool. Let me get a 20 piece because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm growing. I'm trying to get on the football team. But these are wins in, amongst my friends, right? So they're eating their pizza and they say, hey, let me, can I try one of those barbecue ones? Oh, that's pretty good. You know who you are. You know who you are. You're probably watching this right now, my good friends. But at the totally joke, it was, that was probably my biggest gripe. I got used to sharing my food, obviously. On the, in, in, as it relates to like the actual like cafeteria foods, I didn't really have any issues. There were, we were super fortunate at Illinois State. We actually had a Chick-fil-A, believe it or not. So I would swipe my Chick-fil-A. Yeah, that's. To this day, that's probably something I didn't know. We how had hungry Howie's. That's pretty. That's pretty good too. That's oh, pretty good too. We might have had Little Caesars too. I think those are beautiful options, right? So you know, just something to kind of know that you got a dedicated source where I just lemonade fries and, and chicken nuggets, right? Like I'm gonna be fine eating those things. So it was really one of those things. And as I got older, you know, living outside of the dorms, you know, you start to date a little bit. Um, folks are cooking here and there. You're going to potlucks. And I had to be extra careful, right? So I, that's when I started to kind of reinforce the discipline around, make sure you eat something before you leave, right? Yeah. Because number one, you're trying to gain weight. You know, it's always going to be a struggle. We all broke college students. So more than likely it's going to be pizza, some mac and cheese, something that's carb heavy with some cheese for the most part. Um, so I just kind of built that muscle. And then from there, it just became natural to make sure that I'm the guy that's snacking around. And then, if, you know, if there is some foods that I can eat, then that's a double time, right? I love to eat anyway. So I'll eat my meal before and maybe do something towards the end of the night. So I was able to navigate it, Renee. It took a lot of trial and error, but I did have some friends that started to kind of see those struggles towards the end. You know, less folks uh, asked for those chicken wings because they knew that, you know, it's not this cool to do that. <laughs> this is all I can eat, man. But you know, I, I, I started to share. So my wife would say differently these days. I don't like to share those chicken wings, but no, nah, we're vegan now. So it's all good. <laughs> so that is very interesting, Kason. Okay, so I started out not having milk. And mm -hmm. then um, my mom told me when I went to college, she goes, you can have skim milk. And that's what I drank for the longest. Nice. And then about five years ago, I think it was, I, I stopped drinking milk. Mm -hmm. And then I would go drink it. And I recognized that I would be, <clears throat> yeah. I'm like, oh my yep. God. Yep. Yep. They're right about the inflammation. It. The bottom of the lip starting to come up a little bit like it's I can only imagine no and it was just it was just um like I could feel all of a sudden I had a lot of phlegm and I'm like mm -hmm. so I said I and I mean I love so I would just do it real quick like I would just have one you know half a gallon for a weekend and then okay I'm done because <laughs> I literally would drink two gallons of milk a week I love skim milk I just like oh, wow. I kept my mugs in the refrigerator so they were cold I poured the cold milk I loved cold milk so now I am like the biggest fan of oat milk. Oat milk is amazing. Oat milk, is amazing. Uh, oat milk coconut milk, um, some of the nuts that I can do. I can do almonds. I can do walnut. We got a, a way to kind of make our own milk at home. It's at that level now. But yeah, we're looking. I think that a lot of folks don't realize how fortunate they are to be living during these times because it was right. kind of hunter gatherer, right? Figure things out. Um, there wasn't like a vegan aisle or a food allergy friendly aisle. You didn't have partake cookies which are amazing, by the way. I've Again, never heard of friendly these. Cookies. Oh, so Partake Cookies, you got to talk to Denise Woodard. She's amazing. She's it's an African-American, Black-owned uh, cookie company, right? And my mouth is watering right now. We were talking about different foods, right? I don't have access to them, so I'm kind of mad at myself. But <laughs> go to Trader Joe's. Go to Target. You can get them. Um, they're amazing. Matter of fact, send me your address. I'll send you some. They're okay. amazing. But things like that, they didn't exist back in the day, right? So it's really fine tuning. Okay, they don't have anything on the back of this in terms of the ingredients, but you know, folks or companies were not talking about may contain back in the day, right? So it was maybe in the same plant that if you're eating this granola bar, there may be a little peanut in there, right? You still got to be careful. So things still need to get better, but they're much, much like light years better, I'd imagine, uh, oh, yeah. from at least when I was coming up in college Definitely. and beyond. 
definitely. And like I said, the oat milk has been like, I love it. Chobani and Oatly, those are the only two I'll drink. Chobani is fire. The extra creamy one is great. I'm not going to lie. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's I, I mean, Chobani and Oatly, I was like, Oatly was the first yeah. one on the scene that I was like, oh my God, this is a game changer. Yeah. And then, uh, and it was funny because Oatly isn't cheap. And Oatly was only, is only sold at Target and Whole Foods. Yeah. And it wasn't exactly convenient to get there, but I was like, nope. And so I am a couponer and I'm cheap. And so I have an app that I gain money on and you can get Good. Cards, so I would get gift cards for Target to go get my milk. <laughs> that's smart. That's yeah. extremely smart. Yeah, exactly. You got to subsidize it because that's one thing. One, the special, even though we have a lot more foods, the specialized diet costs more. Yeah. In most cases, like the, the Nisa cookies are priced the right way, but there's a lot of other things that are not there yet. Right. We're almost there, price wise. My um, I I was so blessed to get to go to the National Restaurant Association. The big thingy in the in Chicago. I know you know what I'm talking about. I've heard thing. about it. Yeah, yeah. So you know you can't buy a ticket. You got to be invited. And so I was so blessed in 2019. And people were like, "But why would you go? Because <laughs> I, I can't know. eat." And I'm like, "You just don't worry. I want to go." And so yeah. I went in 2019. And when I tell you, I was like, oh, it was so cool." But Chobani yeah. had their oat milk. This is before mm. it was on the shelves. And mm -hmm. I took one sip and was like, oh, my God, this is the bomb. Sign me up. Shut up and take my money, right? Pretty yes. much. <laughs> and then when it came out, it was at Mariano's. Mariano's ah. is my neighborhood grocery store. And if you live in Chicago, you know there's a Mariano's all everywhere. Kind of like Whole Foods for those that don't know. Right. Well, no. Well, Mariano's was like, is you know, Kroger owns it. So it's more a Kroger I than anything. Know that. Yeah. Because ah. if you go in there now, you'll see Kroger brand products are in there. But gotcha. um, yep. but Mari and you know Mariano's originally the whole story with Dominic is the whole yep. story, but yeah. So Dominic's was my spot, and then Mariano's came, and I'm like, okay, this this is good. But because Chobani was in Mariano's, that meant it was more readily available than having to make only go to Target or Whole Foods with Oatly. So you know Chobani ended up being you know in my refrigerator a lot more often because it was easier to get to. But um, it's so good, Absolutely. though. They've done a great. And then they have now the zero sugar one. Wow, and it tastes okay. it's good, too. Just like Oatly, the low-fat Oatly tastes just as good as the full-fat. The zero sugar Chobani tastes great, too. See, now I want uh, I want some cookies. I want some Chobani milk. milk. I want cookies and milk. I want some food later on. We right. talked about West Indian things before. Exactly. I'm, I can't talk to Renee without a snack <laughs> tray in front of me moving forward. That's what it means. <laughs> right. But yeah, it's so much so different now because there was just nothing. There was like, there was no information. It was nothing. And it was like you said, it was trial and error kind of a thing. Like, mm -hmm. like I had intimins, I remember, I think at church when I was in elementary school and I just ain't never ate intimins again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you, you eat something that cause any harm and it's like, you don't even want to see it. Yep. Um, the, the logo is a bad word. Darn near. Right. Like when right. you see you're like, no, I don't want to, I don't want that in my presence. Right. Trick or treating got weird after a while. Right. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a good time to, I want to say a good time, but a better time to have food allergy for sure. Yeah, and I want all the products we talked about. And restaurants now they have allergy yeah. friendly menus like they'll say oh yep. like i'll never forget i went to native foods and they had a whole thing where you could push this is your allergy and you flip over and it'd say these are the foods you can eat here and i was like this is so convenient yep. whereas before Oh, you cannot beat that. Um, there's more and more restaurants that are starting to do this, yeah. right? Um, just having, when you think think about that, right? Like if I walk into your restaurant establishment, especially during these times where, you know, you can't keep a worker because of the times that we're in and you can't serve me, what does that mean to you, right? Like, like at the end of the day, I think it just makes good business sense. And maybe I'm just scratching our own itches, but the reality is that there's tons of buying power when you think about the food allergy families that are affected by this life-threatening condition, right? So. We're going to go to my, you know, not Maggiano's, uh, Maggiano's, I believe that's another restaurant that does a pretty good job. And obviously Native Foods, uh, the one in Hyde Park is one I've been to as well, too. Yeah. And, you know, when, when you have that, the, the restaurants that identify that, those are the ones that are going to win, right? Um, long term, because I know once we can get into bigger groups again, you know, I'm not ordering wings at a pizza place. I'm a grown man now, right? So I want to go to a place that's going to serve me the full shabam, right? With right. my allergies in, in consideration for sure. Definitely. And um, so what other allergies do you have? 
Yeah, so again, casein, uh, pistachios, uh, cashews, and finfish. So that's why I asked about, you know, um, just yeah. prior to our, our conversation. Uh, finfish was the first one, I believe. No, no, no. No, finfish was the first one. I was like, again, four to six. Uh, high schools when I found out about the cheese allergy or casein. Um, I was at work one day, hungry, lunch, at post lunch, 3, 3.30. Coworkers like, hey, you want some pistachios? Apparently, I've never eaten a pistachio in my life. <laughs> Up to that point, my body was like, what are you doing? No, <laughs> no. Like, it started doing things, and I was in a fetal position, literally oh, no. on my desk. And, yeah, yeah, it was it was one of those things because I've had the muscle memory, as you know. You know when it's starting to kind of kick up, right? And in my brain, I knew I shouldn't have ate it, but I just wanted to try it, and I didn't want to let them down, right? Uh, cashews, it was the same thing, except I was around family, a mixed nut tray. And I said to myself, you shouldn't do this. But Renee, I was actually starting to work on my allergy at this point. And I'm still making these boneheaded decisions, but it's just sometimes you're a human and you just want to kind of let go. And that's one of the beauties of, I think, the, our approach is all about being proactive, patient, uh, proactive patient-driven design. So from our software we'll talk about later on to the app, we want it to be there, or the device, we want it to be there when you need it and not when you don't, right? So it's not, it doesn't create that social stigma of making your field and stand out and look different. Um, I got to carry my epi. I got to ask all these questions. Let's make it pretty as, as, as automated as possible. If not, just take out the panic by way of the, the different tools that we've had uh, coming soon and that are currently available on iOS and, and Android as well. We went to a FET in Brooklyn, and this was not that long ago, and they were serving bacon shark. Mm. And I have not met a fried dough that I don't like. I just like <laughs> fried flour. <laughs> and I hey, know it. Fact. I mean, Yep. Donuts, bake, you know, um, <laughs> um, doubles. I mean, I like fried dough. Okay. Oh, I love doubles. So, oh, so I, I'm like, I'm gonna get baked. My sister's like, Renee, that's not a good idea. And I go, <laughs> I'm just gonna get baked. I won't get the shark. Da -da -da. She goes, Renee. And so we are like literally watching these people take the spider <laughs> and scoop and then scoop. And Alicia's like. Renee, do you see that they are not changing the equipment? They are using the same one in the, sh mm -hmm. in the shark as they're using in the bake. Renee, you can't. And so I finally admitted to myself that I can't because <laughs> I was going to make everyone have to go home if I did. <laughs> so. Definitely, definitely. How does that, like, how are you doing these days with that, right? So obviously we're starting to, like, you know, slowly but surely, maybe you're getting takeout here, maybe you're starting to go out. Do you see a difference? And I know I'm kind of switching roles a little bit, but do you see a difference and how your allergies are treated, right? So I think I ordered some pizza online off of like, uh, I think Mod, Mod Pizza. And they actually had, what are your allergies? And I'd, I've ordered from them like a year ago. And I don't know if it's like some other platform they're using. It's pretty interesting. Uh, we're always following these technologies, but whether it's the technology or whether it's the staff, do you see those, are those conversations happening more on your side? Or do you still, are you still see, like, I hey, hey, I hey, I have, I have this thing. Okay. I don't see them, but you know what? I am a creature of habit, which drives people crazy because I can eat the same thing every day and people are I like, can too. <laughs> don't you need a, no, I'm yeah. good. Like if it ain't broke, yep, don't yep. fix it. So absolutely. we order like Fridays, is the, Friday and Saturdays the days we'll probably order something and we yep. order like from the same places. One, I'm doing Weight Watchers and two, mm -hmm. my allergies, it's like, like my parents the last two weeks, my sister, and my parents have had Middle Eastern. I don't do Middle Eastern. Uh, really? No. Wow. So I went to have Middle Eastern one time. I was either in med school or undergrad. I think it was med school. And I went and I thought that it was rice. I mean, it looked like rice. And there was pine nuts in it. Ah. <laughs> uh, so I yeah, ordered chicken yeah, I forget about the pine nuts. It fine, yep. But it was the pine nuts and the rice that started me going. And I took Zyrtec yeah. and I was fine. But yeah, so I just don't do Middle Eastern. So I go get the Middle Eastern and then I eat like Boston Market's my thing now and I'll eat Boston Market. So um, I will tell you Wildfire, which I'm sure you're <laughs> Boston Market, you can't go wrong. Right, exactly. Wildfire. Wildfire. State, is that Chicago? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. On Erie. Yeah, okay. Where yeah, the yeah, Hooters yeah. used to be. Minute. Like Hooters was yes. like, yes. And Ed DeBevix was right there too. And I now believe, I believe, I, I don't know if I've been there, but I know what you're talking about. Okay. And it's owned by Lettuce Entertainment. Absolutely. You know, and they own a whole lot of restaurants in Chicago. So I go to Wildfire. Yes. Yeah. And I'm a frequent absolutely. diner at Wildfire. And so they have it on my face. Like they know I have allergies and they have it 
on my name, like when I make my reservations every time. So like the last time I was there, I saw the bill, like I paid the bill and then something was left on the table and I saw it and it said, she's allergic to, and it was all typed out. And I was like, wildfires looking out for me. I love them. Uh-oh, did we lose you? Oh, he's back. It was going. I am back. I am back. So the, yeah, the wildfire, wildfire looks out anything. for me. They they have they know my allergies and like I said, I'm a frequent diner and so they have it and they and they'll even they they the waiter will say something to me too like as I'm ordering and I will never forget because it said for some reason I don't know who said dairy because I didn't I said eggs I didn't say mm -hmm. dairy and they put it down as dairy. So they served me my steak mm. with no butter on it. I didn't know what was missing until it was missing. I was like, this has got to be something wrong with this steak. What is missing? <laughs> my sister was no, like, that is hilarious. I was like, Alicia, you can't put no butter on my steak. You know what? Butter is the one that a lot of folks, it just depends on the individual. Like uh, the, the part, the, the areas that I get the most anxiety, at least prior to the pandemic and probably moving forward is when you go to a wedding. So when you go to a wedding, you kind of know what the dish is going to be, right? I know that, okay, hopefully they'll have a salad. They're going to have some bread, which I'm going to gonna own that plate. That little bowl of bread is going to stand <laughs> right by me the whole time. I'm going to have the butter right there. Like, Can I get your butter? Yeah, thank you so much, right? We have green beans, yes. Potatoes, thank God. Fish, oh, why are we trying to be healthy today? Why did y'all have some chicken or something like that, right? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's all about the awareness and just prep more than anything else, but it never gets it never gets normal. It allows these stories that come out, right? Right. And, and I'm like, you know what? My one friend, um, she was um and she was being nice. It wasn't, you know, anything mean, but she was like, I'm so sorry. I said, girl, no need to be sorry. I live a fabulous life. Have you not noticed? <laughs> like, I'm good, you know. I yep. said, I grew up like this, you don't miss what you've never had. Facts. So it's not a big deal. Now, had I yep. had things and then they were taken away, I probably would be different. But yep. because I never had chocolate and I never had, I've never had. So I don't know yep. it. So it's fine with me. Like, I've never had shrimp. You know, I think it looks cool when people eat them, but <laughs> I won't eat them. And you know what else I thought was cool? Pistachios are the ones you pull apart, right? Yep. Okay, yep. So I, I thought that was cool. And so, and I don't think this made it in the book, but uh, they were eating pistachios and I stuck one up my nose. Oh my goodness. You're and good, so, right? You know so, no allergies, right? No, no. So this is one, I'm allergic to nuts. Two, I've stuck it up my nose and I'm a child. This thing is like uh, completely blocking my nostrils. Oh my goodness. Wow. And of course wow. they couldn't see it. So they didn't know what happened. All they know is that I was fine one minute and the next minute I'm wheezing. Oh and no. And my mother is just like, what is going on? And so <laughs> they, obviously we end up in the ER and the pistachios on my nose. Oh my, my goodness! Was so mad. You know what? Based upon this story, I'm convinced that between our moms' experiences raising us, we made them way sharper at their jobs. I'm pretty right. sure your mom's a legend at what she did. My mom was amazing at what she did yes. as well because you can't. Once you get home, you're still working, right? right. You still got a patient to work on it on a day to day basis. Right. And then there, there is a story. It's in the book. Um, my mom went grocery. No, my dad went grocery shopping. I think my mom, my sister and I are two and a half years apart. So she's younger. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my sister was still a baby. My mother's trying to tend to her. I'm trying to be helpful. And I cracked the eggs and I'm sitting in the corner with. And oh, all of a no. sudden, no noise. And my mother looks and now I'm wheezing and I've got eggs all over me. And, Extremely you know, she, severe. Wow. Exactly. She was like, Man. oh, God. This is just what we need right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm waiting for your mom's book to come out after right. this, right? So she has her own full book. Like, let me tell you the behind the scenes of Dr. Renee. So that, that, that. He's like, <laughs> I don't believe this child. What are you doing? And uh, yeah. so, and she's like, she was mommy's helper. I was trying to help, you know? And so mm -hmm. I tell people, I love baking. Like my sister is the chef. And yes, she knows how to bake too. She took pastry in culinary school, but I, mm -hmm. baking was my thing first. And okay. so I like to bake. And so I do crack eggs, but I immediately wash my hands because I am mm -hmm. allergic to the egg whites. So mm -hmm. I have to immediately wash my hands because if I don't, I will start wheezing. And, and wow. so, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I do. Cause people are like, why do you have eggs in your refrigerator? I said, because eggs go in jiffy and eggs go in <laughs> <laughs> pancakes and eggs go in. I said, have I tried. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just, I'm just curious. Have you tried some of those like egg alternatives? So I you have. got just I egg have. and you got like flaxseed is not great, but flaxseed. Which one? Oh. oh, 
Yeah, they say that's like an egg substitute to bake. I'm like, I've not know, tried egg, just egg, but there was one. It's called egg replacer, and it comes in a box. It's I think powder. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I used to use that yeah. a lot. I didn't like it. I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, and it was it worked fine. I made cookies and mm -hmm. stuff with that. It was fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, I usually just because I think I had to go buy that at Whole Foods or something special. It wasn't at the regular grocery store, so I just buy eggs. Mm -hmm. and people laugh because I will have eggs for a very long time. <laughs> and by the time so I you, crack you them, they kind of look them. a little strange, but they work just fine. My mother's like, did they kill you? I said, no. She's like, okay. <laughs> so you've maximized the life cycle of an egg on a day-to-day -day right. basis. Like, you know. Right. <laughs> and, so, and then other people are like, but you're allergic to eggs. So what I found out once I was in med school was that the protein changes when you cook the egg. And so okay, that's yep. why I can't have scrambled eggs. I cannot have meringues, stuff like that. Yeah. But I can have eggs when they're inside of like cookies or cake or pancakes, stuff like that. So yeah, very interesting. No, I, I hear that a lot as well too. I think um I don't is that the same thing that kind of happens with milk, right? Like I couldn't do it just milk by itself, but if there's a cookie. Yeah. You know, outside of partake, right? Again, partake all day. But if there's another cookie that has milk, I'm good for the most part. So thankfully that happens, right? Because cookies was my number one thing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we know Dr. Renee uh, makes cookies. She just promised me. Snickerdoodles that, is my favorite. Yeah. Snickerdoodles is my favorite cookie. That was the first cookie I ever learned to make. That's we were bored one. one day. And my mom is a, she's a gourmet chef. My mother is the bomb cook. And so she was like, go pick one of those cookbooks and find something to make. Because we didn't have nothing to do. We told her we were bored. So yep. we picked this cookbook. And if I could think of the name of it, it's a pretty famous cookbook week for kids. And Snickerdoodles was the, one of the recipes in there that I could eat. Because, of course, my sister can have everything. Uh, yep. But I could eat Snickerdoodles. Snickerdoodles are basically um, a cookie that's rolled in cinnamon and sugar. And yep. I love all things cinnamon. So we Thanks. made Snickerdoodles. And that has been our cookie ever since. Shout out to City Cakes bakery in new york city they have a sugar doodle that is basically a snickerdoodle their cookies Ooh. are half pound cookies and i will tell wow. you i have never had any problems there yes they serve chocolate they serve nuts but they clearly understand they're a small yeah. little bakery it's you know when you're in new york you go down the steps to go it's very yeah. small i think two <laughs> two customers fit in there at a time i'm not exaggerating those are the best places but when i tell you city cakes they they love Dr. Renee and um, Foodie Engineer, my sister. They love us to pieces. They ship. They ship too. But half pound cookies, I've never had any problems. But they have snicker the sugar doodle. They have oatmeal mm -hmm. raisin and they have a ginger molasses. I think it's called. I can't think of what it's called right now. Those are my three cookies I eat from there. And I don't have. I've never had any problems. I don't anticipate ever having any problems because they 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 must understand. They're not trying to yeah. kill anyone, so they don't cross-contaminate. Um, you know, I know a lot of people ask and ask. I don't ask a whole lot of questions. I usually yeah. just walk around and assume that you're not crazy. <laughs> and um, and I have that not to too. mention, I have that when I too. eat things, I usually eat small bites first because I'm like, just in case, I'll know if it catches. Yep. And even a small bite, That's I can right. have a reaction, but at least I know, and then I haven't taken it. Because if I take a huge piece, then obviously I can get sicker. But if I have a mm -hmm. small bite, I'm okay. So... City Cakes, shout outs to them. I love them. And they, City like cakes. I said, this half pound. Do you understand me? These are the I mean, I almost went on Yelp. Eat. I almost went hey. on Yelp and was, went to the website to get an order in because yes, I was like, I'm that just sounds you, like my the cookies. Yes, they're amazing. So, wow. um, but yeah, I love cookies. I'm a cookie person. I love cookies. So if you took my cookies, I'd be very upset. So, <laughs> and then, same, you know, because of, you were, you're a Michigander, you know, yep. I'm sure you know of the Franklin Cider Mill. The anything that you any any type of food that you can see through a paper bag typically is gonna be a win. And the fact that I saw donuts, I never I'm from Chicago, right? We don't I have know. you know, we we have our own, you know, we don't have that donut culture that yeah, you guys, you guys don't really here, have right? a cider mill kind of a thing. Nah, nah. So when I saw that, number one, I, my mind was blown. I knew what I was getting into at first bite, and I cannot wait to go right away. Those are the best. Those yeah, are absolutely so the best. I literally will not allow myself to eat donuts all year so that I can have <laughs> Franklin Cider Mill donuts. Franklin Cider Mill is only open Labor Day weekend until the Sunday after Thanksgiving, and that is it uh, every year. And I literally will wait so that I can have those donuts. Got to make um, it count. 
They are the best donuts. And once again, here's another thing. I have never, ever had a problem there. Same. Yep. I never had to ask questions. Now, mind you, they serve all sorts of Apple products. Yep. They got all sorts of apple pies and stuff and cakes, things that do have nuts and stuff. But I have never had any problems there. Yep. Um, the cider is delicious, too, because, you know, you have to have your cider and donut. I usually what I'll do is I'll come home for Maybe. Labor Day weekend. My birthday is August 30th. So I usually come home, celebrate my birthday with my parents. And then I take my donuts and cider back to Chicago with me. And then oh, I eat. My out. Chicago family absolutely loves it. They <laughs> when I come back in, I can come back in March. Like, hey, where's the cider at? I'm like, right. Oh, it's not it's cider not time. That season yet, right? <laughs> but it's the best yeah. thing ever. Um, and mm -hmm. so, and then people are like, "You eat a Dunkin' Donuts?" Yes, I eat a Dunkin' Donuts. Um, and they're like, "But there's a sticker on the door." I said, "If you notice, most restaurants put the sticker on the door. They don't want to be sued." But Dunkin' Donuts, they keep things separate enough. I have never had a problem at Dunkin' Donuts either. Mm. Um, when I was in school, in elementary school, when you could take treats to school, my mother mm -hmm. would buy the munchkins because she knew if she bought them, I could eat the ones in that box. Now, yep. somebody else's box might have chocolate in them, but mine's would have powdered sugar ones and cinnamon sugar ones, and I could eat those. those um, so. I could eat Dunkin' Donuts. And I like the plain Dunkin' Donut. If I'm going to eat a donut outside of the cider mill, the plain Dunkin' is what I buy at Dunkin'. But um, Not even the glaze? Not the glaze one? No, I don't like Ooh. glazed donuts. And, yeah. you know, the funny thing, I've never had Krispy Kreme. And my sister's like, I don't mm. think you'd like it because you don't like glaze. It's a glaze thing. Yeah, those, yeah. That's that, that Krispy Kreme, that's another hour conversation. I'm, right. I, had a, I had a habit back in the day. Not totally different. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so, you know, I, I, and I, like, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wrote the book. I eat a whole lot of different places. Yeah. I tell everyone, you know, I was, I, I've actually lost a lot now and thank you to, I lost my COVID and, and then some, but good. you know, before my good friend, Weight Watchers, my good trainer, Glenn Lott and the Peloton, mm -hmm. I, I was not a small person. I said, clearly I'm not eating air. So I, you know, <laughs> I have my favorite places that I go to, and I mm -hmm. do eat at a lot of chain restaurants that are around the country, and I eat other, you know, like I'm, you know, Chicago. I'm sure you're familiar with Sweet Maple. Um, Sweet oh Maple yeah, is my On Taylor Street favorite yeah. brunch spot. Man, you got to get Thank there like six in the morning, right, to get in line. Thank it feels like. Thank you. <laughs> it yeah. is so amazing. Yep. I love their biscuits. The biscuits are the best thing the ever. Biscuits. Or but, almost mean, a, they can, you can make a pillow out of three of them. Right. They are yeah. so delicious. But yeah, yep. I, I have my little, you know, mom and pops like that that I eat at too. But and then, like I said, you know, I'm West Indian. We've done carnival. We eat the street food. I ate on the carnival, you know, on the um on the road as we were doing carnival. I ate just like everybody else did, you know. So mm. and I've never. I've awesome. never gotten sick in the islands. So, and, and look, and I told people I ate at restaurants where they were pulling the lobster out the water and cook it. And I never got sick. Like, for, for real, anything literally. in the Caribbean, that's, that's, I've literally seen that. And it's the best ever. Obviously, right. it's, uh, I'm coming from the shellfish side, but folks have right. told me the fish is amazing. And it makes you wonder sometimes. But like you said, it's like out of sight, out of mind, right? Like right. once you know what you can do. You, you just kind of come to grips with that and you maximize how great that could taste. Yeah. And then I just, I literally, I don't, you know, I, if I like, I might ask questions. I might not. I also might cater if I feel like asking questions of what I eat. Cause if I eat steak, obviously I don't have to worry about, did you fry it in the wrong oil or something? Yeah. But mm -hmm. like I said, fried chicken and fried chicken, chicken fingers was my my staple for the longest, chicken fingers and French fries. But mm -hmm. um, and then I grew up and was like, okay, we can't order that all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I expanded. Yeah, don't let nobody tell you different. If you want to get chicken fingers and fries, we're not going to judge you. It's 2021. No. We don't do that for food choices anymore, exactly. right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I've expanded my palate and I eat there you go. other things now. <laughs> but I will be, full disclosure, I did not carry uh -huh. my EpiPen daily until maybe 10 years ago. And it, yeah. the only reason I started is because I did a focus group in Chicago about EpiPen. And I said, you know, maybe I should carry that thing. And I started <laughs> putting it in my purse. And yep. I had two, I think. So I had one in my purse and one in my backpack. So I always had it with me. Mm -hmm. But that was it. And my mother, when I came home and showed her what was in my purse, she was so happy. Mind oh, yeah. you, it was expired. She goes, First steps, baby steps. Have, to have <laughs> something. Have At something. At least you have it. Yep. And so I was horrible. I didn't carry it. Fast forward, we're going to Trinidad Carnival, 
And I'm telling my do my doctor, my allergist, Dr. James Thompson in Chicago, he's amazing, associated allergist. He's mm -hmm. like, um, I said, well, my cousins are really concerned about my allergies and they're just really worried and they want to make sure that they have an EpiPen in case something happens to me. So the people on the trip, it was, I forgot how many of us it was, but it's the Matthews ladies that are, you know, of my dad's, you know, my dad's brothers, it's four of us. So they said, well, we each need to have one. Mm -hmm. So if you're in, you know, if you're with one of us and something happens, we have it Makes covered. Sense. So I'm like, well, I don't know if I can get four. Maybe I can do two, right? So I tell the doctor and he goes, oh, AviQ has this great program. You can get them for free. I said, really? He's like, yeah, and they UPS mm -hmm. them to me and everything. And do you know they sent four? So yep, each yep. one of us had one. And after we leave Carnival, they all give them back to me. And then the next year I've given them all back out and then they give them back to me. And so mm -hmm. that's, so AviQ is now the thing that I use plus EpiPen. Sorry, but y'all, that was some foolishness, that whole $600 thing. That was not yeah. funny. That was horrible. That was unfair. And yeah. that was just wrong on so and many you know, levels. That's, I'm glad you brought that up. That's another reason for the inspiration for what we do, what we do, right? So, like, you know, you talk about social determinants of health. You talk about the economic disadvantages towards getting said medication, access to a doctor in the first place, getting tested in the first place to see if you have an allergy in the first place, right? All these things kind of play a role, excuse me, <clears throat> play a role in you know managing your food allergies on a day to day basis. So to your point, when you mentioned you know you weren't the most, even though you had, we talked about horror stories for about forty minutes straight, right? But I'm just like you, um, because for some reason I did not carry that EpiPen at all times, and that was that was the genesis of the company, right? Let's find a way to make sure that it's there when you need it and not when you don't. This is just a prototype, but ultimately. You thought you talked about the the, the, the IVQ. I think that's a great example of another form factor. But we want to be more price conscious. I believe the cash pay for that is like forty five hundred dollars. So there's certain programs that kind of, and this is no knock, this is just a reality, yeah. right? There's different uh, programs that are out there, but it still gets put into the healthcare ecosystem. Somebody else is paying for it. So it's really interesting to kind of see how our respective journeys shaped, obviously, the podcast and you know what you got going on. And for us. It's all about saving lives as well, yours as well, too, through education. And when we think about the device, you know, we have some partner conversations going on throughout this year and next year as well, too, to kind of get to the next hurdle of regulatory. Uh, we see a very clear pathway, but it's really, I mean, when I think, when I zero in on why we do what we do, uh, Renee, it's all about um, just improving the lives. I think about my mom, all the moms are not nurses like our moms, right, or doctors or healthcare professionals, right? So. How do you create a product that can be the middle person to kind of create a little bit of a peace of mind, whether it's through software technology or if it's just by having something that looks like a battery case for your phone, right? And then things just started happening from there. So we've been super fortunate to get to a point where we're at. Um, I'm happy to say that effective next, I believe the 18th, if I'm not mistaken, we're going to have a, uh, a granite patent. Uh, we've been working on this for a while, so we're super excited about that. This is the first time I'm sharing that news. Um, so super excited about that. And it just allows us to continue to do the work that we're doing at this point. So when you talked about EpiPens being left, my brain is wired towards instructing folks about that story. So forgive me. Had to show oh, no. So wait a minute. So first of all, how does one go about creating an app and the device? Like where did you like where did you start? Yeah. So you know what? First principle thinking, right? Just kind of getting fundamentally what do I know and what do I don't know? And if I had the reverse engineer to where I want to go, you know, what's the is is it a heavy lift to learn how to build a back end where all the data is stored as well as a front end, and you kind of learn about what needs to be done on the software side. So I made sure that I kept smart folks around me. Uh, Ryan, a good guy that I worked at with, uh, at Meridian Health Plan, uh, that's what brought me from Chicago to uh, Detroit when I learned how to code, right? And you know, just kind of seeing, I think it's all about making sure you have the right folks that supplement your weaknesses, number one, because you have some strengths that supplement their weaknesses as well. So once you get that team, that's the first step. But on the device side, that's something that clearly you just don't Google and there's not a recipe out there like, hey, how right. do you get a market to market in the first place? So for me, I immerse myself in anything that I want to do, right? So started off with YouTube videos, watching good conversations like this, getting notes. But the biggest win for me was reading the Stanford Biodesign book. Uh, is this a book that tells you about medical device uh, uh, product development from A to Z, zero to 60? And I said, okay, cool. So now we have the building blocks for the offense in terms of how we want to build the company of the future, right? 
Um, so that involved, okay, ideation phase, right? The invention stage. So, and it's continuous uh, iterative. So we're making sure that they are kept involved um, in our product development throughout. Uh, so ultimately, Uh oh, I think we lost Jeff. Cool, right okay. to ensure that you know, right. we have the right team, the IP to get. But you know, yep. can you hear me now? Yep. Cool. Now I don't know where it was lost. But long story short, it was just really learning as fast as possible. Yeah, learning as fast as possible and making sure you got the best team possible to do it. And now we're at a point now where partnerships. So basically, to answer your question, focus on what you can do, provide value as fast as possible. It may not be a medical device. It may be an app. Don't overthink it, right? You don't need to get the you know 100 million lines of code. There's different platforms you can put out there. And quite frankly, sometimes it's a survey. Sometimes it's you drawing on a whiteboard and showing your friends and different stakeholders. The biggest thing I always tell folks when it comes to building anything, right? And we're still, I'm still a student of the game myself, just getting started, right? Um, there's a phrase, la la lastly, I'll say that if your prototype or your MVP, the first thing you bring to market, if you're not embarrassed by it, uh, then you you've waited too long, right? On the device <laughs> side, we have to, you know, we definitely have to do regulatory. You got to go through testing, so it's a different beast. So our app, we put it out there, iterated, iterated, sunsetted it, brought it back up, and now we have some new software that we're building around uh, the oral immunotherapy space, right? So long-windedly, that's a treatment for folks that have food allergies for the 17, 18 years old or so. Where you can hopefully, you know, if you go to in your case, right, you're allergic to egg. Hopefully, if you were taking that, oh no, let's hope it's oh, there you are. Um, so I need to facilitate the and I don't know if I'm still online right now, Karen. You're slowing just a minute. I think it's slowly coming back. Like you're frozen, but I hear you. It is not, it hasn't come all the way back yet. Okay, it's coming back a little bit. Oh, he's come back. Okay, he'll he's gone for a second. He'll be right back. Don't forget to hit the super chat. Don't forget to hit subscribe. Let people know about this conversation. Thank you so much. And did I even, you know, I don't even have a banner for. I don't. Let me do that. Okay. Wow, wow, wow. I was getting into it and then all of a sudden right. the internet said no. Um, <laughs> but if <laughs> you're clearer now, I will say that though. I was lost in translations. Um, start fast. Yes, yes, start fast. Uh, get in front of your customers and obviously their patients, whomever that may be in the first place, and just, just try something, right? And then from there, iterate, bring it back up, adapt and attack, figure it out. And obviously, the best. Uh, uh, feedback you can get is from your customers, your patients, whomever that may be for the most part. So really just get started. That's what it really boils down to. You'll figure it out. Um, otherwise, you're going to be having this idea. We all have those ideas, right? That, oh, I want to do this one thing, but I need this type of talent to do it. Sometimes you're you're a lot closer than you think. Right. And so I always tell everyone how I meet how I know people. I met Javier in 2019 at Matter. Matter is yeah. a incubator in Chicago. Um, and it was just crazy because he's from Chicago, lives in Michigan, and I'm from Michigan, living in Chicago. And so I was like, oh, my goodness. And I thought his product, his device was just the most amazing thing ever. So can you tell him about the device? Yeah. So, you know, what we're looking to do is uh, we found studies out there that were before our time that stated that about two thirds of patients and caregivers don't always carry the life saving device. That is your epinephrine auto injector. So we talked about a couple of them, right? Your EpiPens, the IBQs, et cetera. And it's due to the clunkiness. It's due to the inconvenience to carry. Sometimes it's just forgetfulness. We're humans. We're at home right now, so a little easier. But as time went on, especially with, I'm not just saying it's exclusive to our millennial and Gen Z populations, but you have that social stigma, right? So walking right. around with something that makes you feel different. 
Uh, so what we're building and what we built is a redesigned epinephrine auto injector that has a form factor that allows it to fit on the back of a phone case. And once you remove it during emergency usage and inject your leg hold for about 10 seconds or so, um, we're going to send a notification to the right folks. So essentially your uh, food allergy action plan, right? So they know where you're at, what you're allergic to, and how to save your life in real time. Again, just kind of piggybacking off of a uh, physician recommended plan. Um, we know that you got to carry two, so we want to make sure you at least have one because, as you mentioned, you may have one in the car, one in the purse. We want to make sure we're, we're that on you at all times, breaking case of emergency. Then you can escalate, run to the other device because we'll sell them in twos as well. Um, we are looking to, uh, we have some very strong partnership conversations. I, was, I think it kind of got cut off in, in, in um, some of the Wi Fi issues that I had on my side, but really, David with Goliath is our passion and way and strategy to get it all the way to market. On the other side of our platform, we're building an OIT, oral immunotherapy platform, um, essentially a digital uh, software for patients, doctors, to really have a lot more peace of mind, support, and transparency when it comes to taking this treatment, which is microdosing what you have a food allergy to on a day-to-day -day basis. That's the first of its kind. Uh, we've talked with the leaders in this space, and we think we have something pretty special. So we really see ourselves long-windedly, Dr. Renee, as, a, I'll say, a proactive patient-driven design company. And we're looking at a 360 solution, right? Um, not reactive. Oh, I had an issue. Run to said device is more so, hey, let's stay in front of it and also give you incentives to stay on top of it, right? Because it gets exhausting. Oh, I got to go into this app again, log things out. We want to make sure you have the reward. So um, lastly, we have a software that's another soft bit of software that's more commercially available for any parent or patient, lifestyle app, um, create a profile, HIPAA compliant, allowing you to save recipes, grocery store items. Uh, so you can have your favorites, right? Dr. Renee knows exactly where hers are. So we want to make sure that you can easily share that with whomever else needs to take care of you, your kid, et cetera. So 360 solution, we're not a one trick pony. We want to make sure that we save folks lives like myself, Dr. Renee, and the more than 220 million plus folks that have a food allergy. And I think that's an old number now, right? So uh, we're passionate about it. Um, we're food allergy nerds here at Allergy, hence the name. And they're super excited uh, uh, to get the, the these innovations in front of our audiences. That is so awesome. So first of mm -hmm. all, he I had sent him a message before to be on, but he's so busy because he is like the pitch king and he get, right. I, wins every pitch and that he does. <laughs> but when all are we right. gonna see you on um Shark Tank? You know what? You, know, you never know. Uh, you never know. Uh, a lot of conversations are always happening. I get that question a lot. Um, I will say that um, we 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 we're currently exploring that. That's all I can say. We're currently okay. exploring that. Because there, you know, there's a guy that does like medical stuff that comes in as a guest judge. I think so. I haven't seen it in a I while, but I've seen name, some highlights. But he does. But he literally like his his investing is mainly in the medical space. I think it's the guy from the Kind Bar, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, that's a very direct I'm domain. Almost positive that's who it is, but it's. It, there's there's a it's a man I know that and he sits in with them and specifically people who have medical things he's the uh, one that usually invests in those and like his portfolio that's what it's full of. Well, you never know, Renee. This might be the drop. So when we if it happens, you never know. This is the first time we talked about it publicly, so this will be a good throwback Thursday very soon right. and, and in their yeah. future. So it's definitely so something I, um, I think that can add value. One of the uh, doctors, we um, black female doctors were mocha docs. One of the mocha docs, she has magnetic lashes. She's an ophthalmologist, eye oh. surgeon specifically, created mm -hmm. magnetic lashes. And she was on maybe a month oh. ago and yeah. she, sold it. she got a deal and that is awesome. you know, sold out that weekend, but literally started her company February of last year and That's was awesome. earning by the end of the year. And I think had her first six figure month, like in October or something. So I love it. I yeah, love it. anything is possible. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and then let me just don't get me wrong. We definitely are interested in it. There's, right. there's lots of conversations going on. And I think right. you're right. That's the boost that can really take your company from zero to 60 for sure. Right. And even if you don't get a um, deal, because it's funny, my um, the very first ever deal on Shark Tank was Mr. Todd's. And Mr. Todd's Bakery was literally around the corner from my sister's house. Oh, so wow. I met Mr. Todd. Me and Mr. Todd know each other. He had the picture of him and Damon John in the store and stuff. And that's awesome. And um, and so I know that just exposure alone is very yep. helpful. You know, Curl Mix was on. Curl Mix is a Chicago brand. Out of Chicago and they yep. did not take the deal, but then they just raised four four million, five million dollars in like three days. 
Absolutely. Yep. The yeah, Lip Bar out of Detroit. There's so many, so yeah, many stories. Yeah, the Lip Bar. The, yeah, they were turned down too. Yes, Detroit. Yeah, killing yeah, it. Melissa Absolutely Butler. killing it now. Shout yeah. out to Melissa. Uh, no, yeah. 100. I think that's and that's the beauty of it. When you talk about um, just the lack of uh, funding opportunities at times for underrepresented uh, folks in the space, it's good to know that there's like real dedicated platforms like a Shark Tank. That if it's not the investment, it's the boost because that PR, especially in our viral world, is is critical. And we've had some small things that have gone. So I'd be curious to see how far it can go when we think about uh, being on the stage with the Mark Cubans, uh, uh, obviously David, uh, John, and, uh, yeah. David John, everybody, et cetera. So it'd be very interesting for sure. Yeah. Um, so everyone, you need to get the app, Allergy. Yes. If you yes. know anyone with an allergy, you need to tell them about it. Go to the website, follow him. He, you're on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I know you're strong That's with it. Instagram. So make sure you do follow on Instagram because we do. want everyone to know about this and to support. And um, and I can't wait. Like I said, I can't wait to buy one. I'm 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 signing up. I've told so many people about it. Appreciate they're like, you. what? And they're like, I was like, it's so cool. It goes to the back of my <laughs> I said when he did that, I was like, oh my God. Because I literally in all these Facebook groups I'm in, I see, I swear at least once a week, if not twice a week, the same question. How is your child carrying their thing? My child is this age. My child is this age. Mm -hmm. The other day I saw a lady said, my son, his pockets are bulky. And I'm like, okay, it's life or, or, yeah. or bulky pockets. Absolutely. Yeah. No, it. that's Just 100%. Your pocket. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta find a way. And I think uh, with our internal design team, I think we've, we've gotten a way, we've gotten a way to meet both middles. We've had all the questions while on the back of a phone. Um, can we do it alone? And without rhyming, that wasn't, that wasn't a mistake. But at the end of the day, we totally see the value in, in giving different ways to kind of carry that happy. We don't want you, we don't care if you're team Android or team iOS, we want you to right. be team, bring your device with you at all the times. And I think we can do something pretty special to really create a nice impact in food allergy awareness and, and adherence as well. And I like the fact that it will let people know I've injected myself, this is where I'm at, because you know, if it is that severe, you may not be able to communicate that. Oh, absolutely. I've had if a story you're told by to me. yourself or something, you know. I've had that story told to me. Long story short, I was in Nashville at a medical conference, um, having a conversation about our innovation, another vendor. Um, she says that she had a friend that was at home, had a food allergy reaction. Nobody was there. And um, that was one of those like, this is why we do it. You hate to talk about those stories, but that's the other side of this. It could be avoidance here. Hey, cross contamination, Will Smith hitch. But the dark side is that it could it can happen pretty fast and escalate pretty fast if you don't have the right support, uh, especially as we live alone at home too. Uh, you want to make sure you have those tools. So we're super excited about it. You know, we'll be you know let us uh, we'd love to get we'll be knocking on your door, Renee. Once we have that very special email from the right regulatory body, we're going to be back on and I'm looking forward to sharing more and I'm looking forward to buying your book as well too. So yeah. sign me up and we're going to get that shared in our socials as well. Appreciate it. But yeah, I um and I like that you're doing like the 360 approach. Now I've told I'm and actually we we have a part section in the book about oral immunotherapy, but I've told people it just wasn't for me. 44 years, yep. I have went without I'm, oh, yeah. 100%. I'm fine. I don't yep. miss anything. I'm okay. But mm -hmm. I can understand, you know, parents want to do and you know, that's fine if that's what you want to do. But um that's cool that you guys have that. That's really neat. And then I like that um the, I know that because I've been obviously I have the app and I've seen, you know, you, you get to share about places that you've eaten and yep. so other people mm -hmm. can know. And because that's the other thing is that people in, you know, these different groups are like, we're traveling to here. Where can we eat? Well, you know, these mm -hmm. are some of the places that we've been. We didn't have a problem and stuff. So and I like exactly. the um because it can be very difficult, especially if you're sending your child to stay with grandma for a month or something and you you know, for you to make sure you remember everything. Well, if you have this app and you